Welcome to the Hetch Hetchy Valley. This was a favorite spot of John Muir's. He called it one of nature's most precious mountain temples. 100 years ago, he led the fight for its preservation. But even though it was within Yosemite National Park, this magnificent valley was lost, dammed, and flooded under 300 feet of water. Today, the people of California are considering the idea of restoring Hetch Hetchy to its original beauty. Recently, the state published a report which concluded that Hetch Hetchy can be restored without anyone losing water or power. This is a practical idea whose time has come. We now have an amazing opportunity to return this national treasure to the American people. Join me as we discover Hetch Hetchy. Imagine. Imagine a valley. A valley cut from solid stone where sheer granite cliffs rise to the clouds. A place where water takes flight. where the slightest breeze sets a meadow to dancing. There's a slow-moving river that meanders back and forth across the valley in wide, sweeping turns. The first people called this valley Hetch Hetchy, their name for the unique grasses that flourish here. Hetch Hetchy is a wonder of nature, where the elements of water and stone, fire and ice, join to create one of the most magnificent mountain valleys on Earth. The story of Hetch Hetchy can only be told by telling the story of Yosemite. Less than 20 miles from one another, the two valleys were shaped by the same forces of nature, and both played decisive roles in the American conservation movement. In the 1850s, almost everyone looked at nature as something to be controlled and exploited for financial gain. In the process of logging, mining, and farming, the land was often devastated. During the California gold rush, whole mountains were washed away for a few ounces of precious metal. At the same time, rumors of a spectacular valley began circulating throughout California. The astonishing descriptions of Yosemite's grandeur attracted one of the world's most celebrated artists. When Albert Bierstadt painted Yosemite's grand vistas, an unbelievable landscape emerged from his canvas. The stunning photographs of Carlton Watkins proved that the artist was not exaggerating. The photographs persuaded President Abraham Lincoln that Yosemite Valley should be set aside for the American people. In 1864, the height of the Civil War, Lincoln took the time to sign the Yosemite Grant. It marked the first time in history that Congress recognized the inherent value of a wild and scenic place. It's the sheer size of Yosemite. Americans can come here and see a dozen waterfalls and grand mountains, all in the space of seven square miles. So Yosemite sets in motion. It solidifies all the emotions that have started. It focuses all of this on one grand 
and sheerly monumental place. And that allows conservation, scenic preservation, to begin. At the precise moment when the perception of nature was beginning to shift, a young adventurer sauntered into the renowned valley. Yosemite taught John Muir to see nature in a new light, and when his writings were published, his ideas were widely embraced. Never more. However weary, should one faint by the way who gains the blessings of one mountain day. Whatever is fate, long life, short life, stormy or calm, he is rich forever. During his years of exploration throughout the High Sierra, Muir realized that there were other priceless landscapes that needed protection. Chief among them was the spectacular glacial valley carved by the Tuolumne River. For John Muir, Hetch Hetchy and Yosemite were two parts of one inseparable and sacred whole. Hetch Hetchy Valley is a grand landscape garden, one of nature's rarest and most precious mountain temples. I have always called it the Tuolumne Yosemite, for it is a wonderfully exact counterpart to the Merced Yosemite. Not only in its sublime rocks and waterfalls, but in the gardens, groves, and meadows of its flowery park-like floor. John Muir feels that Hetch Hetchy is essential because it's the second Yosemite Valley. So John Muir wants Hetch Hetchy protected as the northern valley in this huge national park. Muir's dream was finally realized when Yosemite became a national park. More than a thousand square miles were set aside, including Hetch Hetchy Valley. Basking in this important victory, Muir was blind to a rising threat. In order to realize its dream of becoming one of the West's most powerful cities, San Francisco had to find a reliable source of fresh water. After scouting around the state for more than a decade, the city cast its eye on the Tuolumne River and the Hetch Hetchy Valley. Although other rivers were closer and far less expensive to tap, San Francisco insisted that only Hetch Hetchy could quench the city's thirst. Less than a decade after Hetch Hetchy had been placed within the borders of Yosemite National Park, San Francisco asked for a permit to build a dam and reservoir. The battle for Hetch Hetchy was extremely emotional, very protracted, very bitter, and certainly is the first great battle of the American wilderness. John Muir organized a grassroots campaign to prevent the flooding of Yosemite's twin. In his letters to President Teddy Roosevelt, Muir made the case that Hetch Hetchy was a national treasure that should not be sacrificed for the municipal needs of San Francisco. In the end, Muir won the argument, and the Roosevelt administration refused San Francisco's permit. In 1906, a devastating earthquake rocked San Francisco, and the resulting fires leveled the city. Although pipes and fire hydrants had been shattered by the quake, making it impossible to tap supplies, city leaders were quick to blame the raging inferno on a lack of water. San Francisco plays on the emotion. We've just been destroyed by this huge earthquake. Our future is now even more tied to getting Hetch Hetchy water. We will not be able to grow. We will not be able to expand. We will not be able to rebuild if we do not have a secure supply of fresh water in the High Sierra. San Francisco pressed the advantage. In 1913, President Woodrow Wilson signed the Raker Act, granting the city a permit to build a dam and flood the spectacular valley. The battle to save Hetch Hetchy was over. John Muir died a year later.
By 1923, the Hetch Hetchy Valley had been clear-cut and then flooded under 300 feet of water. San Francisco got its water, and Hetch Hetchy became a memory. Millions of Californians have been using water and power from the Tuolumne River ever since. San Francisco's water system was designed and constructed in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, and it reflected the prevailing values of the day, which were to maximally exploit our natural resources for the benefit of society and for business. But we don't live in that age anymore, and our values have changed dramatically. In 1987, Ronald Reagan, Secretary of the Interior, surprised everyone by proposing that the O'Shaughnessy Dam could be dismantled and the Hetch Hetchy Valley restored. I asked the Bureau of Reclamation to take a quick look, give me a back of the envelope evaluation of is it even potentially possible. Within a few weeks, Dave Houston, who was the director, came back to me and said, it's totally feasible. He told me that there would be more water available for everybody than there was with the dam in place. You could take the dam out, cooperate, and have more water. The city, the peninsula, the state and federal governments, I think, have an opportunity to work together to make restoration happen at the same time as we protect the current residents who are relying on that system from earthquakes, from water shortages, from power shortages, and so on. Since the mid-'80s, when the Reagan administration proposed restoring Hetch Hetchy Valley, there are probably seven or eight different organizations. All have looked at varying degrees at this issue, and each of them has concluded that it is more than feasible to restore the Hetch Hetchy Valley without San Francisco losing any of its water. The reservoir here is not the source of San Francisco's supply. The Tuolumne River is the source. This is one of nine reservoirs that's part of San Francisco's system. We've shown that 95% of the water currently coming from the Tuolumne River could still be delivered even without that reservoir. It's important for Bay Area residents to understand that their water is safe. They have the rights to this water. What is at issue is where the water is stored. San Francisco could store its Tuolumne River water downstream and outside of Yosemite National Park. In dry years, additional water could be supplied from aquifers, larger reservoirs, or purchased on the open market, alternatives that many California water agencies already practice. If we remove this dam and restore Hetch Hetchy Valley, San Francisco's water rights to the Tuolumne River do not change. They would move the water and store it differently, but the same high quality water would be delivered to San Francisco. In addition to changing the way the Tuolumne River water is stored, simple conservation measures will help to restore the Hetch Hetchy Valley. In 1993, the city of Los Angeles gave up its water rights to the mountain creeks that feed Mono Lake. If LA continued taking water, Mono Lake would have become a salt flat. Los Angeles established the most innovative conservation measures in the West. Mono Lake survives as a magnificent natural wonder because the people of Los Angeles found a way to use less water. Eventually, Los Angeles embraced the idea and has restored Mono Lake. I think we need similar kinds of uh, recognition on the part of the San Francisco um, political leaders, as well as the citizens throughout the state and throughout the nation. San Francisco's getting a pass in Hetch Hetchy a bit because they're an environmentally sensitive Northern California city. It's not like we're exporting this water down to Los Angeles. If this was Los Angeles's dam and this was Los Angeles defending its occupation of Yosemite, game over. Water from Hetch Hetchy also creates power. Most electricity provided by the Tuolumne River could still be generated if Hetch Hetchy were restored. San Francisco's entire hydroelectric system in the Tuolumne watershed accounts for only about one half of one percent of California's electricity supply. If we restore the valley, a river will still flow through it and it'll still be possible to capture a lot of that river's energy as it flows downstream. 
Electricity is a commodity. It can be bought and sold, but there's only one Hetch Hetchy Valley. We only have one opportunity to restore Yosemite Valley's lost twin. That's priceless. Move to the next panel. Lois Walk formally requested the state of California to evaluate the restoration proposal. And we thought it was an idea that was so big and a vision so extraordinary that it needed the governor to weigh in. And we wrote a letter to the governor and we said, we think this is extraordinary, worth further study. Take a look at this. We think this is something the state and the governor can do. And he agreed. The state of California released their report in the summer of 2006, and they supported the concept of restoration. The opponents are now put in the position of having to move to their second line of defense, which is it's too costly. And frankly, that's a losing position for them. The science is done. No one's arguing with that at this point. So at that point, the conversation becomes about the value of, tr of restoring Hetch Hetchy Valley and the cost of it, of it. And for me, that conversation isn't so much about dimes and nickels. That's a conversation about values, about American values and about San Francisco values. What is the value of a second Yosemite Valley? What does it mean to the nation and the world to bring back a priceless wonder of nature? The best way to answer these questions is to imagine what the future might hold if Hetch Hetchy were restored. Scientists have suggested that water in Hetch Hetchy be drained off slowly, exposing a few hundred acres of the valley floor every few years. As the water recedes, the Tuolumne River will reclaim its former meandering channel. In the very first year, grasses, sedges, and rushes will push up through the mud flats. Scientists from many fields of study, assisted by students and park volunteers, will begin one of the most exciting restorations in history. This could be the premier site to learn how to recover long-lost habitats. Within five years, vegetation will have re-established itself on the floor of Hetch Hetchy. After 10 years, the distribution of plants and trees will begin to resemble Hetch Hetchy before it was dammed. Visitors will hike into the valley to witness the restoration. 100 years after restoration begins, Hetch Hetchy will look much like it did when John Muir walked its meadows. Hetch Hetchy will become the second Yosemite, and visitors from around the world will come to experience this wonder of nature. I think Californians and San Franciscans and people from Silicon Valley in particular, I think see themselves as concerned about the future of the planet as conservationists or environmentalists. So I think for them, there's this great vision. If they can contribute to the restoration of a fabulous place without hurting themselves, I think they'll be in the, in the forefront of doing that. It would tell the rest of the world that we are not imprisoned by a decision we made 100 years ago because our future's different, our needs are different. Hetch Hetchy's value is higher as a restored landscape than as a water tank. The challenge is how to get there. By restoring Hetch Hetchy Valley in Yosemite National Park, we create an international classroom for restoration scientists from around the world to come and learn about how they can go home and restore their own natural habitat that's been destroyed in the 19th and 20th centuries. We have an opportunity now, not just to stop degradation, but in fact to restore an extraordinary place. And I think we should do that. I think that inspires us, that brings imagination to our lives, and we owe it to our children and grandchildren to do that. Imagine yourself in Hetch Hetchy on a sunny day in June standing waist-deep in grass and flowers as I have often stood, while a great pine swayed dreamily with scarcely perceptible motion. It is one of God's best gifts and ought to be faithfully guarded. For nearly a century, this magnificent valley has been waiting patiently, waiting for a nation and the world to discover the beauty that has been lost discover the promise that will bring it back. Discover Hetch Hetchy. After careful study, 
Scientists, engineers, and elected officials all agree, Hetch Hetchy can be restored, and it can be done without anyone losing their water or power, now and in the future. It's a practical idea and a great opportunity to do something for the planet and for our children. I invite you to join the campaign to restore the second Yosemite Valley. Help us return this national treasure to the American people.